you know the gandhi family must be singing this song rahi nay nay rasta naya naya tum na badli main na badla sab kuch badal gaya rahi nay nay rasta naya naya why this chintan shivir taking place in rajasthan i think it is in jaipur where they first said that there will be one family one seat except there are some exemptions such as the gandhi family so it means that this rule doesn't apply to the gandhis now the g23 which is the old horses they are fighting back and they say that the congress needs to reconstitute its parliamentary board this used to be there during narsimha rao's time narsimha rao ji uh, you know abolished it probably he felt that this is where many of these people who don't deserve to have any power will be making noise so he just got rid of it now they want it back and people who don't want it back there are also people in congress they say that if we bring back this parliamentary board this some of these old hogies from the g23 will get a seat there and they'll start making noise again just make Makes it, uh, uh, you know, functioning of the party difficult. This is their, you know, grouse. So which way this is going to swing, we don't know. But I have a guess that they will end up electing Sonia Gandhi as the president again. You know, interim president, working president, that president, this president, ex president, vice president, finally president of the Congress party because they can't agree on anybody else and they still. hope and believe that this lady alone can get them the votes i think she got the votes by keeping her mouth shut in 2004 and 2009 was more because of the candidate that bjp put up against her that person had a proven record of having not won and that probably was what is the reason i mean this is just my opinion i could be wrong certainly adwani ji was the one why today uh, bjp is so strong he found that one thing that resonated across the length and breadth of the country ram rajya ram mandir which is what led these people to succeed however there are people in the bjp who don't want to acknowledge all that well so why do i say that now do you know that there is a bjp parliamentary board also and who sets up the members in the parliamentary board the national executive committee 80 members now do you remember that some big names who are actually independent minded got excluded from this national executive executive committee last year even when they were there they wouldn't be given a chance to speak but now they are not even there so whatever little oversight that this nec could have on the parliamentary board has also gone out the window today there are supposed to be 11 seats in the bjp parliamentary board unfortunately only 7 have been appointed the other four are still vacant it is hoped that yogi adityanath could be one of those who might make it in so you might ask me the question who are the seven people in the bjp parliamentary board narendra modi amit shah rajnath singh nitin gadkari jp nadda five right shivraj singh sahan six and seventh one is bl santosh that's it that's what is the numbers now and this is supposed to be the uppermost decision making body look at that list do you think there's any voice there that is democratic if 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 uh, amit shah and uh, modi decide that this is the way it is and it goes wrong do you think any of the other voices are going to say no what happened was wrong that we need to do course correction they got rid of those voices and from the nec itself so this thing about india being a democracy is really 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 under threat right now i don't believe for a moment that the bjp government currently is any more democratic than what the upa was with sonia gandhi running things from being the chairman of the national advisory council you know all that is bs so if you say that that method was wrong how is this method right how many times have we had transparency saying that okay these are the things that we considered and this is what we decided take the farmers bill for example because the farmers bill was protested by punjab what happened the wheat harvest has taken a beating many of the farmers were paid money to come and protest so now suddenly india has stopped exporting wheat and g7 is up in arms they saying wait a minute you said you will give us all the wheat export and india has like a switch they've turned it off that's also not right 
You don't win friends by turning things on and off like a flip of a switch. This is not electricity. Speaking of electricity, Finland has confirmed that Russia has stopped electricity, uh, sending electricity to Finland because Finland decided to join NATO. And I'm going uh, somewhere else. But let's get back to Congress. No matter what you do, unless this first family gets out and gives the keys to the treasury to a properly elected body. And again, these are all things that need to happen. If it doesn't happen, then this this party is doomed. And it's my guess and many others also are guessing the same way that what will end up happening is a rank and file will desert Congress. Probably one half will go one way to BJP. The other half will go to the next pretender to Congress, which is Aam Admi Party. This is my guess. I could be wrong. Maybe there some will be picked up by TMC also, Trinamool Congress. So in conclusion, what I think is going to happen is that the Congress rank and file will split two or three ways and that will be the end of Congress. It might take a decade, but I think the end is near. Thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe to our channel and do not forget to click on the bell button. Namaskar. Thank you.